Hello, welcome to this part of the tutorial. This is our part four, and then we're going to use an electrical submersible pump to artificially lift oil from an oil well. Now, uh, we have a model here, and then let me just show you the basic properties of this model. This is um, a model with solution GOR gas oil ratio of 400 standard cubic feet per stock tank barrel. The oil gravity is 30, and then the gas gravity 0.75, water salinity of 80,000. Impurities are zero, and then we have uh, matched this with data from the lab. So that's what you've done there, and then that's why the PVT here is showing matched. Okay, and then uh, well is actually naturally flowing well, and um, sure. Okay, all the sounds. So this is a this is our IPR and then the IPR this is um, a reservoir data uh, a permeability of 150, reservoir thickness of 100, drainage area of this and then um, notice our reservoir pressure is this and temperature is 200 okay <coughs> so if we look at the IPR plot we'll discover our absolute open flow potential is about 29,049 stock ton barrels per day uh, that's good. The skin is zero, and then the formation pi is ten. Okay, <coughs> that is that. So now let us look at the production from this well. Okay, uh, our top note pressure for this well is two fifty. Then the water cut is zero. So let's just continue. Let's perform some sensitiv sensitivity analysis. What happens to this model if the pressure, the pressure is currently at four thousand? Okay, what if it reduces to 3000 and then to 2000? What if the water cut increases? Let's, let's just try that. What will happen when the water cut increases? Where is water cut? Okay, when the water cut is currently at zero, what if it increases to 20, to 40, to 60, perhaps to 80, and then let's check up to 90. What will happen? Will this well continue to produce? So let's just run sensitive analysis. Okay. Now this is that adds pressure of zero, zero water cut. It's not producing, and of course it can't produce. So at a pressure of two thousand, there is no production at all. At a pressure of three thousand, there is production up to water cut of forty. So above a water cut of forty, there's no production. Okay, that's wonderful. But um, our pressure is actually at zero, so there should be water um, production all through. Okay, now it is um, this is our model from the information we've gotten. The model has been in production for some time, and then the pressure has actually decreased to 30 and um, to 3000 psi, psig, and then the water cut is at 70 at 80 percent. And then we've discovered there is no water cut. So, what we want to do is we want to use electrical submersible pump to artificially lift what um oil from this model so that is what we are gonna do so it's very simple now first of all we have to change this if you look at this um the summary system summary uh, tab we'll discover that the artificial lift method is known so we have to change this to electrical submersible pump okay having done that another thing we have to note is that the electrical submersible pump is something that will be installed down all and it is expected to fit into the casing. So we will be required to supply additional information in this down all equipment. Then so we have to edit this and then we discover tubing was at 3800 and then we are expected to supply the tubing inside outside diameter and the casing inside diameter. So we'll supply that right away. We have that our casing inside diameter is 8.3 uh, then our tubing outside diameter is 4.5 if you do not supply this information then there will be problem there will be trouble okay so let's do that so now we've updated that let's recalculate our IPR to um, using the information we've gotten now that the pressure is now at that and then the water cuts the pressure is now at 3000 psi and the water cut has increased to 80 percent so we'll use that to recalculate the ipr then we'll discover our <coughs> open flow potential has reduced to 23000 okay and formation pi is at that uh, it's okay so let's immediately go and then design our esp we have the following information that the pump depth 
Now the pump is installed at a depth of 7000 and then the operating frequency is at 60 and the maximum outside diameter is 6 the cable length is the same as the, uh, the pump depth and then the gas separator efficiency let's leave this at zero but we'll have to determine if we should if the gas should be separated from the oil oil it should be allowed then um, what we are actually going to use to determine that is the dumbbell plot I'll show you how to use a dumbbell plot later on okay later on. the design rate is um, at 12,000 the water cord has increased to 80 as we were told and the top node pressure is 250 the safety margin is zero pump wheel factor is zero so now we have to calculate for this okay so the calculation has elapsed and then all other things so this is where we assess the dumbbell plot from the sensitivity once you click this now this is dumb factor you can see gas separation sensitivity plot now there is um this point this point is signifies your <coughs> test the point now if this point is above this red line this dumb factor this red line if the point is above then there is no need for the um, gas separation will not be required but if this point here is below this line then you have to separate it will be required it is recommended although not composite it is recommended that you change your gas separation factor from zero percent <coughs> and perhaps to maybe hundred percent gas separation and all the stuff since our point is above we'll allow it to be at a zero percent okay so that's that now we have to design our gas lift system now you will have to select three things you have to select the pump the motor and the cable now let us use uh, a pump called century central lift okay central lift r300 okay let's see if that can be found here central lift we do not have the pump we are looking for so let's look for something close okay let's try this can see 1000 and then we use the central lift and then we use this uh, there's something you have to note let's just plot this and see in choosing a pump this test point it is recommended that you choose a point in which this test point will be close to as close as possible to the best efficient C line which is this blue line on the scarf now we discover that our test point is close to the maximum operating range and then that means that point a pump will not be very good for the job so we'll have to look for another point now what you have to do to note in choosing a pump is that a pump should be able to produce the range now we are producing at 12,000 that's a design rate 12,000 has to be per day so we are looking for a pump that will be able to produce at that range now let's look at this okay then the minimum range is 6 okay and then the maximum is 18 <laughs> Uh, that's actually good. That's actually good. Okay, so let's try that. Let's try this radar And then let's use a uh, Radar and then well, there are no cables for that. Okay, let's use this and Then we have to use this. Let's plot and see. Okay, you see it's now very close to the best efficiency line That means it is good now so we can actually use that okay that is that so we've designed now the number of stages we need is 106 the power required is this also all the other informations have been calculated by prosper so we are good to go now let's go and perform okay done so let's now go and perform some uh sensitivity and see if our model will now run so we have to update this to 80 okay now We'll actually run this, but let's add another parameter which is our operating frequency. We perform sensitive analysis on the operating frequency. The operating frequency we are actually using is 60 Hz. Now, what will happen if the frequency was to be 40, 50, 60, 70, perhaps, and up to 80? We can specify something like that, but let's just stop there for now for the sake of um, amount of time. So, let's calculate and see what will happen as at different frequencies and different water cut and a different reservoir pressure so our calculation is still proceeding okay we're still there all right it's taking time 15 16 seconds 17 18 okay our version will be there okay 
Okay, now you're done after 29 seconds. Now let's just right away go. If you look at this, you can actually look at the sensitivity analysis data. But let's just look at at a pressure of 30, uh, 3,000 psig and a water cut of 80. Now and at a pump rate of 60. So we see we now have production. Our oil rate is at 2,405. So we've succeeded. That is the actual what we actually wanted to do to make this well produce at a pressure of 3,000 and water cut of 80. So we have succeeded. But we can actually look at okay, what if the pressure reduces to 2,000? Okay, you see we've sustained production up to you see up to 2,000 and water cut of 80. There's still production producing although at a lower rate. So uh, model is actually something wonderful. But let's look at that 3,000 again and at a frequency of 40 you see we have production but at a lower rate at uh, as the frequency increases production also increases notice at 40 we add 1137 at 50 we add at 1782 at 60 at 2405 at 70 at 2999 at 80 at 3561 so that is the effect of the printing frequency so you can choose um, at what frequency is pressed for you but it's um, recommended that you do not exceed the maximum frequency of the pump anyway um, those data is um, what you get when you have your pump you know the maximum frequency and then you know at what frequency to uh, um, actually use the pump okay so that is that uh, that was the aim to use uh, an electrical submersible pump in order to artificially lift oil from an oil reservoir so thank you very much for watching don't forget to like the tutorial if it's helpful if it is not very helpful you can dislike but don't forget to tell us why you're disliking if there are comments questions anything anything you want us to add an improvement don't forget to just write it in the comment box and comment and then we'll be there to attend to it thank you very much for watching this tutorial see you later